let's talk about X, baby. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is your host, Nino, welcoming you to another episode concerning the Pocket 386 modern retro laptop. So this is a modern day computer created on the basis of the ISA architecture where you see leadouts here on the back of the machine featuring a VGA display, 8 megabyte of RAM, an AMD 386 compatible processor and a compact flash card of 2 gigabyte which originally comes installed with Windows and onto which I put FreeBSD 2.25 from 1997. And here you shall see it boot in all its glory and in my previous video I go into detail regarding how one should install this. However, as one topic I sort of did not get into, namely X11 configuration. Why? Because it's 1997 and X11 configuration is a nightmare. Or isn't it? For indeed, FreeBSD has a nice management program. In the past, this was sysinstall, and this is the one we are going to be using here. In modern day, it is, I believe, BSD install since FreeBSD 9. But sysinstall allows you to not only install the system, but manage all sorts of aspects of its configuration. And it should hopefully also allow us to configure X11. So stand, sys install, tada, gives us this. I believe you might wish to get a little bit closer optically so as to more naturally follow along what is happening on the tiny but very crisp screen and I hope that this is going to be easier for you to read <laughs> I realize it's difficult so we're going down with the down arrow until we reach configure do post install configuration of FreeBSD. And here we are having, we should be having, ah, there we have it, the option of configuring X, which at that time was X386. This is a thing which nowadays has gotten a bit lost, but for a time there were two competing open X11 configurations. One was X386 and the other one was Xorg. And in the end, Xorg sort of won. And this is the X386 one. Here we are having two options. XF86 setup, the graphical X386 configuration tool, which we shall opt for, as well as XF86 config, which I initially attempted to use and which just causes you to crash and burn because it just did not configure things correctly. God knows why. Does the system have a mouse attached to it? Pff, well, does it? F FNF5? How's the mouse doing? Mouse internal. FN5. No? FN5, we want that the mouse is internal. Exactly. Okay. So we're having that. Does it have a mouse attached to it? Yes. Is it on a COM port? Or is it a PS2 style mouse? I think I will opt for PS2 style mouse. Even if the internal mouse shouldn't work out, it should not be too difficult for me to get a PS2 mouse physically. Would you like to use the existing XF86 config file for defaults? No, just make a new one, please. 
Press enter to switch to graphics mode. This may take a while. And here, ladies and gentlemen, we're in 1997. If, it, if this works out on the machine, that will be quite a feat. Well, they said it may take a while. And while is taking. <laughs> it's evidently doing something because it's hard disk uh, indicator was really flashing. Was. Hey there. Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh, wow, we are having X11. I tell you one thing, I have been using X11 on a 486, not a 386, also with eight megabyte of RAM, but the 486 was a DX4, not a SX, so it had an integrated coprocessor, and it was tacted even higher. So it was beating the qualifications of this machine in absolutely every respect. And I tell you, X was unbearably slow, really unbearably. So let's say it this way, don't get your hopes high for using X in a comfortable manner. It will be just something we will try to configure, but I clearly advise you to abstain from it. So, what was the key combination for the mouse? Uh, was it... Uh, eh, just a second. Let's play Edge of Tomorrow. I was interrupted. Had to shut down and now I am exactly where I was before. Configuring through the menu X386 through XF86 setup the graphical configuration tool. Uh, when you look at it, <laughs> you will not be able to avoid the feeling of, would you like to use existing? No, not, not this default file. Anyway, yes, sure, switch it to graphical. One wonders about this exact moment, when it switches to graphical, right? Why do I need to configure this? Why doesn't it have like a, minimum viable X server and allow me then to do any tweaks if I deem any necessary. But other than that, save me the hassle. And should such a thought cross your mind, rest assured, you're perfectly correct. At the time, people were asking themselves exactly that same question too. And we can now see that something like X is appearing. Takes a while, right? It does. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, some areas of configuration, which I mentioned that they exist. Up there they are. And Alt-M is going to get us straight to the first point of interest, the mouse. Dismiss. P selects next protocol. That is like the only interesting thing here to read. And then which mouse device can we use? I, I don't know. I mean, we can leave it to Microsoft, right? And then regarding where it's hung up. I don't exactly know what is the typical selection here. It does seem that there are a couple of serial lines which would be acceptable. 
I think I'm just going to stick to the default here. The emulate three buttons, if possible, I would like to have. Okay, I don't have anything else to do. Then Alt keyboard, I guess there will be nothing for us to do because the machine itself is defaulting to a normal standard English layout. So U US English, exactly. So there's nothing for us to do here. Alt card, that's going to be a little bit more adventurous. See, we do have a Cirrus card, but I will try to go for generic VGA, which should be available if I'm not entirely mistaken. Oi, 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 come on. This, this can't be true. Um, FN home. FN page up. Okay, page up seems to be getting me up not particularly fast, but still it is. What we are now going to be looking for is a generic VGA card with a purpose of being able to translate this FreeBSD installation anywhere else. So here we are already at G and yes, generic VGA compatible. I am going to ask for that card. I don't want anything special. I don't want any games regarding Cirrus or whatever. Just assume a generic VGA compatible. Keep it as plain vanilla as you can. Not some stupid Genoa or whatever, but a generic VGA compatible. Yes, now. Okay. Alt N for the monitor. Can I down arrow my way to standard VGA? Now up arrowing it because it jumped somewhere. Standard VGA, please. Okay, press enter. And Alt O for other. I have nothing other. Alt D for done. Okay. Attempting to start server. It does take its sweet time, doesn't it? Well. Yeah, save the configuration and quit. Okay. And that's it. And they lived happily ever after, right? Right? Yeah, well, not exactly, unfortunately. For I tried to run our glorious X server and see what happens. So, so far, everything starts promising. It even gets a bit dark. And then after we have been alone in the dark, The whole thing crashes with the error message cannot open mouse device not configured. Well, that's unfortunate. 
But if you remember in the stand sysinstall program, there was an option to adjust the mouse. And we said, yes, we have a mouse and the PS2 mouse at that. So this was under configure mouse. But as we selected PS2, there was a warning must enable PSM0 device. And it seems that that just, not, just does not work. I don't know why, but the PS2 mouse, at least the internal one, is not recognized at all and it is PS2. This is exactly why you are permitted to have only one of it, right? So that does not work and we may then try to set it, for instance, to COM1. There's no mouse on COM1 and evidently it means that we're sacrificing the mouse. So we're just selecting something that will make the start of X11 possible but that will not give us a mouse. So that's the trade-off. Okay. And if I now say start X, then again, it darkens in a promising fashion. Yeah, and one can only hope that something happens now. Like I find it a bit weird that it is so black, but then again, X11 is slow as molasses on a 386. Ah, here it is. When you speak of the devil, X11 will appear. On modern fast machines, I'm actually very fond of it. But at the time, I must tell you, when you compare this thing to Windows 95, Windows 3.11, then it simply pales in comparison. So here I am in TWM. TWM is the default window, window manager of many old Unix variants and apparently also of old FreeBSD. So what can you do here? I did not install any X specific programs. I can try to type XED for the classical editor. There isn't anything XED. Uh, XCALC, do we have at least a calculator? Nothing. XIs, nothing. XIs with a big X, nothing. Okay, great. So I can then do things like, I don't know, top. Yeah, I can. So the advantage of X would be just some sort of cuter terminal display. Clear, typing it blind. Yeah, clears it up again. I'm not entirely sure how to switch from one window to another. Alt tab does not work. And our mouse, of course, does not work. So if I now use here, the integrated mouse. Let's try to see, is it on? Shift L makes a big L, which means that the mouse is not on. Pressing the right menu button, Shift L gives us a small L. This means the mouse is active. But pressing the arrows does not move the mouse cursor. So, yeah. <laughs> Checkmate. See, the situation is this. If we take a serial mouse, of course I have a serial mouse and I can attach the serial port and then the serial mouse to it. This is cheating in two ways. Way number one, these things are commonly sold without the COM1 adapter. I don't know why, but it's not very likely that my viewers will have it. Number two, sacrificing COM1 is actually 
not a good trade. I mean, you do need COM1 for any form of auto world connection. What do you have a mouse for if you cannot reach the outer world? And there's, you know, no office suit or anything of that variety here. So we can now turn off the mouse again. Yeah, Shift L gives us an L. And one can now look up how one can use this one, this window manager with the keys or install a more keyboard oriented window manager. But if you are fine getting by it as it is, accepting that we somehow didn't manage to activate the PS2 mouse and the serial mouse is not really an option, you are having X11 thereby in FreeBSD. And I'm now going to test the Control, Alt and Backspace thing <laughs> to swiftly kill X11 and it totally works. So that is it for today. Thank you very much for having joined and I hope you enjoyed the show. If you feel inclined, feel kindly invited to come back for further adventures. If not a subscriber yet, please consider joining our friendly club. Until next time, I wish you a wonderful time. See you hopefully soon. And from me, goodbye.